I'd like to talk uh, about a newer procedure for shoulder replacement that's referred to as the reverse total shoulder arthroplasty. And um, it's new in the sense that it's been done in the United States for maybe the past five, six years, um, but it is a model that has been done in Europe for 20 years or more. So it's, it's a procedure that was brought over from Europe and there's quite a bit of experience there. It's a very specific um, individual who's a candidate for the reverse shoulder replacement. Uh, when we talk about shoulder replacements in general, there are two types. The one that I just talked about and we'll continue talking about the reverse total shoulder arthroplasty. And then there's the primary or anatomic total shoulder arthroplasty, which is the most common um, shoulder replacement that's done, and that's primarily done for arthritis of the shoulder when the shoulder wears out. The reverse is done for arthritis that has developed as a result of rotator cuff deficiency. So this is specifically designed for the patient who not only has arthritis in the shoulder, but has arthritis and has uh, lost their rotator cuff. Those patients are typically in their, in, in their 80s, though it can occur in younger patients, but the most common uh, individual are in their 80s before this condition develops. But unfortunately, what happens when the rotator cuff completely deteriorates with this arthritis condition is the patients have a very difficult time lifting their arm and in many cases they are unable to lift their arm and we call this a pseudo paralysis. They're not actually paralyzed but they are unable to lift their arm because the rotator cuff is gone and the ball has ridden up high so that they are unable to lift their um, arm up. The way that we do this procedure here is um, uh, certainly uh, as one can imagine, it's done in the hospital, but basically the operation itself is done by placing the ball on the socket portion and the socket on the ball portion. And that's why it's called a reverse, because the ball and socket are reversed. And the way it's done is basically after we do our surgery and you're in the operating room, we will expose the ball portion and we will remove the top of the ball so that it exposes and opens up the shaft of the arm bone or the humerus as we call it and hopefully you can see this on the video uh, that there is a stem that's going through this acrylic model that you can see that the stem is going down and this stem is cemented in place so that a socket that's shaped like this can be applied and secured in place. We do a similar procedure on the socket portion where we place a base plate and if you can see through the acrylic you can see there are screws in this base plate that hold this in place and this actually grows into the bone and once this is secured in surgery we have different sized balls that we can put on there depending on the size of the patient and that gets locked in place and then we put the arm back in, into its socket and this allows the arm to have a what's called a semi-constrained model where the socket fits in there and when you lift the arm up this holds it in place so that the ball is not riding and the rotator cuff which is in this area it do, is not needed for function and that's basically how we do this procedure.